In this video, I want to go over a pretty major PlayStation 5 feature that is being rumored right now based on a Sony patent, and it's suggesting that the PlayStation 5 is going to be featuring AI-powered game assistant. That sounds pretty cool. The Last of Us Part 2, we know that it's going to be a big game, but how about big enough to be on two discs? That might be the case. Hi-Rez Studios has announced a brand new multiplayer shooter in Rogue Company, so I want to highlight that game. And we all know that Bungie is hard at work on Destiny content. Destiny 2 is about to go free-to-play, however, by by 2025, Bungie is looking to release a new non-Destiny game and becoming a multi-franchise entertainment company. And that should play out in the next few years. We'll cover that at the end of this video. But first up, the PlayStation 5 is likely going to feature an innovative AI-powered in-game assistant according to a new patent that has been spotted online. The new patent, which was spotted by Daniel Amad, is for something called PlayStation Assist, which should be an AI-powered voice assistant, which will assist players during any games. The assistant will dynamically respond to a query depending on the player's current status status in game. You can input a query and then the game will dynamically respond, ask for the nearest health pack and the game marks it. That sounds pretty insane and it adds another level of immersion into a game. I mean, that sounds a little bit ridiculous. Might make games a little bit easier as well if you could just say something and then the game guides you to where you need to go so you can improve your game state, whatever the case may be on that. And while this isn't going to be game changing for expert players who require no help in both single player and multiplayer games, the PlayStation Assist is definitely going to be a nice addition for those who aren't hardcore players players and require some help completing games. If you're a little bit stuck on a puzzle, you would think that something like this would really guide your way through a puzzle, playing a game like Tomb Raider or playing a game even like Uncharted, where I think the puzzles are rather straightforward. If you're having difficulties with it, this is something that could help you out. And the idea of having this voice responsive AI could also be implemented in a lot of other games in innovative ways. I don't really want to brainstorm how it could be implemented. I'll leave that up to the developers because I don't know how easy something like this is to integrate directly into games. But nonetheless, it does look rather compelling. And as we get closer and closer to, like, let's say February, March time, where the PlayStation 5 is finally going to get its full-blown reveal, we do have quite a bit of information about it revealed already. But expect a lot of these rumors to come out, whether it be on specifications, performance, the idea of a PlayStation 5 base console and a pro console is something I had speculated on. But something like this is something that I could see as rather innovative to be introduced into the PlayStation 5. Might be off-putting to some people, the idea of a game holding your hand that much. I know the idea of games being a little bit easier these days is always something we're going to go back and forth on. However, something like this, you would theoretically be able to disable or anything like that. So if you do want the easier version of a game where it does guide you, or ideally game developers themselves can directly disable something like this, as is the case with a game like Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. If that game is just guiding you, that would be a little lame. So hopefully it's game specific and the ways developers actually integrate it into specific games, that remains to be seen but I do think it's something that could open the floodgates to doing some pretty cool stuff in video games next generation. All right, moving on from that, before we get to next generation, we got to round out this generation, and one of the premier games still to come on the PlayStation 4 is, of course, The Last of Us Part 2. We now know that the game will be dropping February 21st, and let's be real, they'll probably release the game on the PlayStation 5 as well in a better version, but whatever the case may be on that, it looks like The Last of Us Part 2 is going to be a massive game. We already know that it's going to be a much, much bigger game than Naughty Dog's previous outings, and it's going to be their most ambitious project yet, but what does that really mean? It doesn't necessarily mean a lot, because if you are a top-tier development studio, your next project should be your biggest project. That really could go for any line of creative work. Your next project should be your most pressure-filled work. It should be your most ambitious undertaking, but in the case of The Last of Us Part Two, that is really heightened even more, and the game is said to be 50% greater than the size of the first Last of Us, and considering that that game was around 12 to 15 hours, that probably means that The Last of Us Part Two will be 20 to 25 hours long. And the idea of a single player game being 20 to 25 hours long, I've looked at my comment section. You guys have scoffed at that notion, at least some of you. The majority of you, I think, are on board with my thinking and thinking that 20 to 25 hours for a game like The Last of Us Part 2 is absolutely fantastic and it's absolutely perfect because not only does that mean we're gonna get additional content, the game is gonna be longer than the first game, but it also means that the game is not gonna be padded to any crazy extent. Last of Us, why it was so strong, and generally speaking, the Naughty Dog games are so strong because of their great pace there never feels like there's that filler content or content that's just there to pad out game time and say, oh, we developed a 100 hour plus game, spend over 100 hours in this game, which that is a little bit lazy. Anybody can really do that. Any studio can roll in a bunch of content that is meaningless to the overarching context and narrative of the game that, okay, yeah, you have north of 100 hours of content, but how much of that is really meaningful? In the case of The Last of Us Part Two, I really believe all of the content in the game is gonna be very meaningful. But now going back to the point of 
this, as spotted by Wario64, the Best Buy listing for The Last of Us Part 2 Special Edition says it'll include a 48-page mini art book, steelbook, avatar set, and dynamic theme. That isn't much of a surprise, really. What is surprising is that it lists the full game being on two discs, which that I find a little bit surprising, given that a 20 to 25 hour game being on two discs is a little bit unprecedented. I mean, Red Dead Redemption 2 came on two discs, but you're talking about a massive open world game in that case with a ton of content. And in the case of RDR 2, it has a lot of content, but I really wouldn't say it's a padded open world game. That's a well-designed open world game, but let's not get on that tangent. With The Last of Us Part 2, with it being more of a focused game, it being on two discs is a little bit surprising to me, but who knows? It might be the case of this game is so visually impressive. So much detail has actually been poured into every specific scenario of the game where, yeah, where every little bit of the game takes up a considerable amount of the disc space and it requires a bigger install. Whatever the case may be, The Last of Us Part 2 is going to be on two discs. If it is going to require more of a hefty install, I think this is the kind of game that we are going to make room for in our hard drive because it is that big of a game. But nonetheless, The Last of Us Part 2 will be out on February 21st, 2020, and it's going to be one of the biggest game releases of 2020. Most years, I could hands down say that The Last of Us Part 2 is going to be the biggest game release of the year. But next year, we got the release of the new consoles. We don't know what's going to be the launch title and even if we eliminate that last of us part 2 final fantasy 7 remake and cyberpunk 2077 all come out in the span of like two and a half months so we can have a debate all day long about which of those three games are the biggest just know it's going to be an absolutely insane time period as a gamer next up high res studios have officially announced a multiplayer shooter rogue company for playstation 4 xbox one nintendo switch and pc high res of course guys known for a lot of multiplayer experiences but rogue company is a brand new multiplayer shooter coming to all major platforms and it touts with an arsenal of mercenaries guns abilities and game modes there is always something to master rogue company is a top secret syndicate of elite mercenaries around the globe to most of the world the elusive mercenaries are a rumor at best however to those in the know rogue company operatives are indispensable to solving the world's deadliest and most challenging missions as rogue company mercenary players will grab their weapon of choice and dive into iconic locations to compete online in various player versus player game modes group up with friends and dominate the competition rogue company will feature cross Crossplay and cross progression across all platforms and this being a high res game you kind of expect that going in but good to see that that's been confirmed as well we don't have an official release date but hopefully it drops sometime in 2020 and lastly as we are gearing up for the release of destiny 2 going free to play as well as the release of the major expansion in shadow keep some major information about the development studio in bungie has come out obviously bungie have stepped away from their partnership with activision and now they are their own entity and in an interview with ign bungie ceo pete parsons discussed the developers plans to become one of the industry's best entertainment companies by 2025 and part of that vision involves not just continuing to redefine destiny 2 but also establishing other franchises it was noted so by 2025 we have a pretty specific path to make sure we transform destiny and that we have other franchise within the marketplace we need to build our publishing group but part of our vision is also to become a multi-franchise entertainment company obviously that is a long ways in the future but i think a lot of consumers and gamers want to see bungie do something else outside of destiny they've been in incredibly committed to Destiny, and Destiny is a massive undertaking given that it is this huge multiplayer game, this online title that is ever-evolving and they constantly have to release content for, but we do want to see more of a single-player focused experience, or if you're gonna have online play, have online play, but do it in a different style, where Destiny 2 is this game where they always have to be on the grindstone for, and they always have to be creating new content. I mean, we've gotten Forsaken, we've gotten Shadowkeep, and we know the majority of Bungie's resources at this point has gone towards Destiny 2, but at the same time, Bungie, if you guys are not aware has an insane amount of resources from the investments that they have to the sales of destiny 2 to all of the revenue that they're generating they have a ridiculous amount of money and they can create multiple projects at the same time and i think bungie for a long time was known as a developer that really transcended gaming and even casual gamers knew about the name of bungie because of the halo tie-in at this point i don't think bungie necessarily has that cachet they're still a very notable studio but i think they need to create more compelling ips if they do want to get back on that level and by 2025 i think that is their ultimate vision and they're probably going to keep destiny around as this you know online multiplayer game that is constantly evolving and a game that has constant investment from the consumers but they probably want to create multiple games like that and have multiple ips under their umbrella and them going solo going on their own path doing their own thing i think is very much a step in the right direction and that's going to conclude this video again playstation 5 looks to be getting a major feature with ai powered game assistant if a patent is to be believed the last of us part 2 might be on two discs high res studios has announced a new multiplayer shooter in Rogue Company, and Bungie is going to be releasing a new non-Destiny game by 2025. That's going to conclude this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.
Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.